Welcome to the podcast, Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram, the It's Possible Guy, and you can find our podcast Instagram at Happy and Single. Today is episode 67, and it's entitled The Three Words That Will Make Dating Fun Again. Now, before I say these three words, please don't hate me. Please don't send me hate mail. Like, this is truly, honestly, how I feel. So, for so many years, like, we have been taught so much bad advice. Go on a date with everybody, everybody deserves a chance. And insert whatever version of that here. And usually it comes from some very well-meaning people. Now, there may be a time in life to do that. You know, possibly, you know, when you're back in, you know, high school and such, like, it's okay to go on dates. But at least in my experience, and that's all that I can speak from, I find that the three most important words to dating are just say no. The same exact three words that they taught us about, you know, saying no to drugs. Just say no. Like, why do I say that? I don't say that to be mean. I say that because the more dates that you go on that you have no desire to be on. I'm not saying that you say no to everybody. I'm just saying, like, if there's dates that you don't feel like going on, just say no. Because what happens is it kills all of the enthusiasm for dating. When you're going out on a date, especially when you're the guy, when you're going out on a date and you're paying for a date and you're wanting to have a wonderful experience, but you already know ahead of time that you're really not into this person. Now, there's different levels. Like there's there's people that I've been like, oh, you know, there's, you know, there's something about them that I want to get to know better. You know, or I find them attractive or, you know, insert whatever else here. But so often than not, I think we actually go on dates out of guilt. I think we go on dates because somebody said, oh, hey, I've got this perfect, amazing person to set you up with. And, you know, are, are you willing to do that? You know, are you willing to go on this blind date? When it comes to blind dates, even... I, I really do. I have a rule that basically says, well, I don't go on blind dates. It basically says I get to see a picture. And if I say I'm not interested, you, I mean, you can choose to be offended, but I'm not going to care. Like, where did we get this idea that if somebody thinks that somebody's going to be amazing for us, that we have to go out with them? I don't know about you guys, but it just doesn't make any sense to me anymore. You know, and and sometimes even well-meaning people will say, oh, you know, this important person in your life really thinks that you'd enjoy this person. And you see the person and you're not attracted and you're like, but it kind of leaves you in a weird place because some people will get really strong. Like, I mean, I've had experiences where some people get really strong. I've had an experience where somebody literally... And this will probably make a lot more sense to people that are members of my faith, but inside of a temple, in, inside the one of the most special rooms in there called the Celestia Room, somebody actually told me that knew me. They're like, "Oh, hey, that person across the way that's your that, that's your wife." <laughs> and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> no, no. Funny enough, like there's an exception to every rule, and. Uh, I have actually heard, like, I have heard of a story where somebody really did, like, somebody walked up to them and they said, hey, that person is, you know, is your person. Actually, you know what? They didn't say that. It it happened to be a person, you know, working in the temple and they basically said something to the extent of the feelings that you're having right now are true. So I'm not saying that, that it can't happen. I'm just saying that usually it it most often isn't going to come from somebody else. Like we give all of our power away to everybody else around us because to be honest, we are afraid to say the word no. Whether it's in dating, whether it's in business, whether it's in work, if you can't say the word no, like there's, 
there's a commonly known phrase. It basically says like, you know, when you're saying no to one thing, you're saying yes to something else. I, I love this story. And every now and then you'll hear one of my favorite shows and I haven't watched it in some time. So this must be for this podcast. But one of my favorite shows happens to be How I Met Your Mother. And because it, it it gave me so much hope when I was struggling as a single person, like it truly, truly gave me so much hope. And I'm, I'm so grateful to Josh Radner who plays the main character and every other character in that show that made it such an amazing show. And the, the really interesting thing though, that I find about that, I, I happen to stumble across an interview with Josh Radner and if anybody happens to know Josh Radner, I would love to have him on my podcast. So just, just saying, um, feel free to introduce me because he's got, he's actually just got such a cool vibe and he's got so many cool stories. And, but one of the stories that he tells is Josh Radner, when he was known, when he was an unknown actor, like just truly, truly unknown, n- nobody knew who he was. And he got this reputation for being super picky, super picky. Well, what happened was this little show came around called How I Met Your Mother. And the casting director or something says, you know, I've got the perfect person for you. Or somebody in that long line of people said, basically, I've got the perfect person for you. But here's the deal. He won't audition for just anything. Now, keep in mind, at this time, like, Josh Radner is an entirely unknown individual. Like, you know, very, very, very unknown. I don't know if he'd hardly been up in anything at this point. But they said, hey, we, we've got the perfect person for you, but he won't audition for anything. So do you know what ended up happening? This show... It was going to be on, well, I don't know if it had been picked up by CBS by that point or even the idea. Anyways, uh, they went to him and they had to sell Josh Radner. These known directors had to sell an unknown actor to be in their show. What if, what if Josh Radner happened to be a person that would simply just go and audition for anything? You know, we we give this idea that being picky is a bad thing. It's not, guys. You have so much of your life to live. That's all you have. I actually say no quite often. I mean, having a podcast that, you know, there, there's pl- plenty of s- single girls that listen to this podcast. I, I have had to just say that. I've just had to say, you know, thank you so much for asking. I'm, I'm not interested. And then I just hope, and I just, I just hope they, you know, still keep listening to the podcast because it will help them, you know, get where they really want to be with the person that is interested in them. Like being interested in somebody is so different. I mean, I've had girls that are just, just stunning, stunning show interest. Um. And because they didn't have the type of energy and we didn't have the type of same ideas about where we wanted to go in life and you know, we didn't have the same really, like the, the spiritual side of me is the most important side to me. Like, don't get me wrong. I absolutely want somebody that's attractive, but they also have to have the spiritual side inside. Otherwise, like, I kind of call it like a haunted house. It's like, you know, it and maybe that makes sense and maybe it doesn't, but because it's like, you know, it could be a beautiful house, but there's no lights on. And just that feeling sometimes when you're around people can be kind of off. I mean, I, I really have had that experience with girls that, I mean, after the fact, once, you know, once, uh, once you've already said something and you've turned them down, it's like, oh, what was I thinking? And it's like, no, you were thinking and you knew that that was not the good choice. Because guys, we all have different, we all have different values in our lives. Now, sometimes we do, we just have to just say no. I mean, I can actually tell you a few different stories about that. 
but oftentimes if we're put in that situation um, where we feel not to do something, we need to listen. You know, I had an experience with, the, with an individual, and this was quite some time ago, but I had an experience where I actually, like, I gave her a hug, and I just had the worst, like, yuckiest feeling that I've had in a long time. You know, and, and maybe a part of me was getting to know her a little bit, and, and there was just this awful feeling. Well, it, it was really interesting because I literally ran away. Like, the feeling was just so strange, and I'd never, I'd never really experienced that before when I hugged somebody. But there was just something off. You know, I'm not giving too many details here so that, you know, no, hopefully nobody will know who this person is. And I have no idea why that feeling came. And it, and it wasn't even saying that they were a bad person. It was just saying, like, Joseph, this is not for you. You know, I, sometimes on my podcast, I've said good feelings come from God and bad feelings come from the adversary. And I've learned recently that I was actually wrong, guys. It's more interesting than that. It's simply, you know, the adversary. And you know, for those that you know, don't even believe in that, you can think, think of it as the voice in your head that's kind of like the saboteur or the, I call it crazy leprechaun thinking as well. But just kind of throws thoughts in our head. Well, and, and the spirit throws thoughts in our head too. The only difference is when you know the adversary is trying to confuse me and frustrate me and scare me. So you can have a dream that could essentially have like like I, I do, I believe that God can answer us through dreams, and I believe He can give us beautiful dreams. The way you know where how a dream was good or bad meaning what, whether it came from God or whether it came from the adversary, is whether it left you feeling peace or whether it left you feeling that yucky, ugly, awful feeling. That's how you can know. Like, we have been, we have this foolproof way built inside of each of us to just know. So when you're experiencing that yucky, weird feeling, whatever you're feeling is not for you. Whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're pondering is not for you. I mean, honestly, one of my, probably one of my biggest fears for much of my life has been that I'd be on a date and just like randomly Heavenly Father would say, Joseph, this is your person. And I'm like, no, I'm not even interested. I don't like this person. Which might have something to do with me just only going on dates with people I enjoy. But that's okay, too. Well, part of that was, you know, somebody very close to me. They had an experience where after just a few dates of going out with a person, they were, they just knew. Like, they just absolutely knew that was their person. And, you know, and they were scared. And sometimes they talk about this and they're like, that, you know, they talk about how they never wanted to marry that person. Now, at the same time, keep in mind, this, this girl that they were talking about, you know, happened to be a cheerleader, um, happened to be quite, quite stunning. And it was just the fact that she was, that she was a little bit short. Like, and, and so I just find that super, super funny that, you know, we find somebody that actually does meet most of our boxes. You know, we're attracted to them. We're excited around them. We love to be around them. You know, and like, like that's the person we're looking for. You're looking for a person that you, that you really match with. I mean, it is absolutely an act of God. And I mean that in the literal sense that anybody ever gets together. I look at God as the ultimate matchmaker. And for those of you that are honestly thinking, 
that, oh my goodness, I don't, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to find my person if I'm that picky. Guys, you just kind of know. I mean, so many people talk about that when they do meet their person. There's just kind of something there that they just know. <laughs> they really do because I, at a deeper level than our bodies are our spirits. And, and this is just kind of one you know, random thought that I have. But I think when we hug somebody, like it's like our spirits get to connect because we're as close as we can possibly be. You know, our, our bodies are still in the way, but especially when we hug someone with really, really good energy, like we just want, we just want to hold on to that hug for a little bit longer because we miss that energy because there's so much of the world that that energy is not in anymore. And so we're looking for those people that are like-minded in energy and, you know, in desires. You don't have to have all the same hobbies. But I think we really do know. Like, we know ahead of time whether somebody is is good for us or not. You know, so, like, like I was saying before, you know ahead of time whether you're even close to interested. And I'm giving you permission. In case nobody else in your life will, to just say no. I really am. Like, if you feel you need permission because you're sick and tired of going on all these miserable dates, well, maybe if you stop going on all the miserable ones, maybe the right one will come along. And maybe you won't be so upset and frustrated from going on all the really bad dates. I know for some people that they might be sitting there saying, oh my goodness, Joseph, like if I really did that, I would go on like zero dates. So having been in a place in my life that I went on tons of dates that I really, really did not want to be on. And I did not feel, I did not love them. I did not feel good afterwards. And the entire time I was there, I was just not, really enjoying the experience. And now some people might say, well, Joseph, you can enjoy any experience. I can. But dating is not a service, guys. Like some people talk about that, right? Maybe in high school, you know, taking that person out. Um, and I don't know, maybe even now, if you feel inspired to take somebody on a date just to, so they can have a wonderful time, awesome. Like that that is a different way to come at it. And but there's a difference in feeling guilted to do something and honestly choosing to do it. There's an absolute difference. You know, and, and I'm actually, you know, even as we're talking about this, I'm I'm even seeing it a little bit differently for myself. You know, if there's somebody I really, really choose to just go on a date as friends with. Because I, I want to serve them and I want to help them have a wonderful experience. That's okay, guys. What I'm talking about more so is that, is the guilt. Like, I mean, I remember if, if I even thought about feeling guilt, like not, if I thought about saying no to somebody that I would feel guilty. I don't. I know people say that guilt can come from God and, and maybe it does with, you know, making some bad choices in our life that we need to correct or change. But I think more often than not, guilt is just a thought created reality that we live in, in our heads. We have, we have thinking go through our heads all of the time, all of the time. We have thoughts floating through our head. And when we understand, as I was saying before, that the thoughts from come from Heavenly Father are going to give us peace. And the thoughts that don't, aren't. Now, there is nothing wrong with being social, being kind, and, you know, and, and helping other people have a wonderful time. You can do that. I'm just saying you don't have to date everybody. 
I mean, you can you can save a lot of those dates unless you feel inspired to do otherwise for the people you really enjoy being out with. I mean, I will also say, especially if you get a creepy feeling about somebody, just say no. I don't I don't care what they're going to think. I don't care what they're going to say. Because that feeling is telling you something. That feeling is saying, hey, there's something off here. I don't know what it is. Like, I mean, I know of people that have literally, right before they were about to get married, the, the spirit has screamed in their head, like, say no now. Like, absolutely say no the second. And they didn't. And it cost them many, many, many years of their life going through horrible marriages. Like, just horrible marriages. There is a power in just saying no. There is a power, especially in following this peaceful feeling of the Spirit. When, when you begin to live your life in a manner that you were guided and directed by the Spirit, and for those of you that might not be religious, what I'm speaking of, what I'm speaking of is that inner compass that leads and guides and directs your life if you allow it to, that you call it your intuition, you could call it inner wisdom, you call it whatever you want, but that's what I'm referring to. And it's funny, this morning I came across a scripture that I've read like tons and tons of times, but it happens to be if you, in, in a book called One Nephi, so First Nephi 14 verse 1, and if, and if you don't know where that is, it's, it's in the Book of Mormon on, on page uh, 27. Or you can just Google 1 Nephi, N-E-P-H-I, and the number 14, and then verse 1, and it'll pop up. But it says, And it shall come to pass that if the Gentiles shall hearken unto the Lamb of God, in that day that he shall manifest himself unto them, in word and also in power and in very deed, under the taking away of their stumbling blocks. Now, I've read this tons and tons and tons of times. But I never realized I saw it in a totally different light this morning. If we listen to the Spirit, then it'll manifest itself in word, power, deed, and even the taking away of our stumbling blocks. So all of the time, like we have these things that we really want in our lives, but we're not willing to listen. Whereas if we simply just listen and follow, we're going to do really well. Like it says, if we just hearken, so basically listen and follow, it's going to help us in word, power, and deed. So it's going to help us feel like, you know, really have that power to do whatever we want to do that we feel inspired to do. We're going to be inspired through words. I mean, there are plenty of times, I mean, that, you know, stuff just kind of comes to us. I mean, even as I was pondering, I'm like, what to, it's either last night or this morning, I, I really don't remember, but I was pondering on what to do this podcast on, because to be honest, I was kind of a blank slate and I wasn't sure what to do. And it just came to me. Well, guys, every one of us has that power. We have that experience. And the more we listen and the more we follow it, the more our lives are just going to be amazing, guys. I mean... I find when I listen to that, when I listen to the Spirit, and when I follow what it says to do, I do really well. And I have a lot of fun, and I have so many cool experiences that you couldn't even begin to imagine. And when I don't, I'm basically left to my own devices, and I don't do as well. So coming back to our, our purpose of this discussion today and this exploration is quite simply this. When it doesn't feel right or when you don't want to, just say no. You, you can get yourself out of some very, very bad situations by just saying no. And, and guys, I even mean if you feel like for whatever reason, to not go out with somebody, it doesn't matter how attractive they are, how stunning they are, how whatever they are. If the Spirit's telling you no, just say no. And, and honestly, like after you say no, you might kick yourself. You might think, oh my goodness, what was I thinking? 
Let's be honest, though. Just as a guy speaking, when there's a super attractive girl in front of us, we don't think very straight. And it's really, really hard for us to, uh, you know, lis- listen to that, st- that still small voice, the spirit inside of us. And, and maybe even for girls, maybe you guys have that experience, too, where you know, there's just a you know, stunningly attractive guy in front of you and you can't really think straight. So especially if there's a super attractive person, if it just feels off, trust it. Like it, it will sa- this will save you guys so much time, so much energy, so much excitement. And, and once again, like the thing that I've actually seen differently as I've done this podcast today is, you know, if you really want to take somebody out that may not get many dates, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as it's a choice that you make and you don't feel guilted into. And, you know, that, that might even lead you to some pretty cool experiences. But so just remember when it doesn't feel right and something feels even a bit off, just, just say no. You'll have a lot more fun. You'll get to actually choose the dates you want to go on. And you'll probably begin to enjoy your life and even being single quite a bit more. Now, if you've made it to this point in the podcast, I'd like to invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I don't know how you got here, but that way, if you ever want to get back here again, it's right there for you in your subscriptions. And if you haven't already joined us, One of the really cool things that I do that's free for anyone that would like to participate is each Monday morning at 10 a.m. Arizona time, I host a group coaching call for Happy and Single. Anyone is welcome to come on and you can even receive a little bit of one-on-one coaching time with me depending on how many people are in the call. Now, every now and then that schedule changes, so you can go to the website Happy n single.com to be able to look at the schedule and also to be able to find the link to the Zoom room. Now at the same time, if you would prefer a more one-on-one type of coaching experience where you can sit down and share your hopes and dreams and and just kind of the stuff going on in your world, Then there's another option available for you as well. Now, the bulk of my business is actually doing one-on-one coaching. If that's something you're interested in exploring, I've got a few spots open in my coaching practice. You can just message me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy, and we can sit down and have a chat. And it doesn't matter where you're at in the world. I've worked with people across the world. I do everything over Zoom, so it actually makes it pretty easy. Thank you guys so much again for listening. And go out and live your adventure. Thank you.